Hey there. Start here. Um, I wanted to do one more rank one clear against the Whisper Bahamut. Uh, I wanted to try an Earth Element team this time, um, just because I've done a Lightning Element team. That was my initial rank one clear. And then I did a Light Element team. That was the, the previous video that I just put out the other day. Um, and so I wanted to try an Earth Element team because Sylvie does have that 100% Earth Amp for the party. Um, and we do have uh, some pretty strong Earth Imperils if you bring Tulian, and, uh, and then of course Tsukiko has that, that nice Earth Imperil field for the team. Uh, so initially I had a full six unit team, I had Golbez in that last slot to drop a Meteor, um, and we did way over the damage cap, so I was like, oh okay, I can just take Golbez out, um, and I can kind of tune the team. Uh, to account for that, and um, so I, I've got it to where this team can consistently hit the damage cap without issue. Um, and so put whoever you want in that final slot. It, it, it's nice because, you know, you can kind of tune your team um, to, to fit in whoever you want in that last slot. You could put in Golbez if you wanted to. You could put in uh, A2. Um, you could do Chizuru. You could do uh, Olive. Whoever you want just to throw in that final slot. Um, and, and this team should comfortably get you to a, a damage cap. Uh, now do keep in mind that, you know, 2B is, is carrying the damage heavily on this fight um, so if you don't have 2b or a2 um, you know that is something to keep in mind um, so you'll definitely want to make sure you have two very strong damage dealers to to replace 2b and then to put into that empty slot uh, you may consider not bringing Tulian and instead throwing in another strong damage dealer um, and just hoping that makes up for the uh, for the lack of imperils like Wilk would probably be a good swap for Tulian uh, in this example, because you could bring the 90% defense break. So yeah, there are some options, very, very swappable options here on this team. All right, let's take a quick look at the gear and see how we get this done. Um, so first of all, Tulian does not need to be EX2. Um, you don't need his SLB. Um, it, it, it works out nicely that his SLB is ready on turn four, um, but you don't need it. His normal LB also does a triple bolting strike chain and comes with an 87% defense and spirit break. His SLB just does an 88% defense and spirit break. And the spirit break is really the only one that you're concerned about because uh, you need to equip your Tulian. Like the only reason to bring Tulian is if you have this uh, item, Vidar, which is a free piece of gear that you get from the Season 4 story. So you do have to complete uh, a certain quest in the Season 4 story to get this piece of gear, but it is totally free. And it's very useful for this ability, Jord Kicks, which does a 160% Earth Imperil, and more importantly, does an 89% Defense Break starting on turn 4. So that is uh, very, very useful and really is the only reason you would ever want to bring Tulian. Um, Tulian is also going to be our passive provoke unit. So you see I gave him Moogle Charm. And then he just needs either his STMR. If you don't have his STMR, that's fine. Um, you can give him his TMR and that activates another 50% uh, draw attack from his um, trust ability. If you don't have a Moogle Charm, just give him his vision card. That does another 50% um, 50%. Uh, draw attack. Uh, Tulian is not going to be dealing any kind of damage. Uh, Tulian's damage is absolutely awful, but you could gear him, if you wanted to, you could gear him for more damage and LB boost, and um, and just, you know, it might give you that little bit of extra if you're like really close to the cap, but you're missing a few million damage. Tulian could come in handy, so if you want to, you could go ahead and gear him for damage, but it's not really necessary. All right, my Esther build. Um, so I tuned I tuned her down uh, a fair bit from my previous clear, my previous rank one. So just one piece of Magister's gear for the chain cap boost, um, fifty percent undead killer to cap her Reaper killer. Judge's oath again, uh, just to make sure that she's at least twenty percent fire and dark resist for the elemental damage. Uh, her own vision card. It's not necessary if you want to give her like Chizuru's card, um, which is a, f a free card you can get from the uh, Perma VC Select Shop. That would work here too. So I think an EX2 Esther should also get this one done uh, just as well as an EX3 Esther. Uh, just as long as you have her capped on killers, LB damage, uh, and her TDH, she should be fine. Inner Brave should form. The only thing you really need is her TMR um, equipped, and then you can just build her for, um, again, making sure she's got at least 20% fire and dark. You see we're way over capped on elemental damage, uh, or elemental resist there. And then um, I just wanted to boost up her spirit a little bit so that the um, so that those magic attacks, the, there are 
uh, a couple of single target non-elemental magic attacks on turn one. So increasing her spirit just reduces that incoming damage. Uh, but yeah, otherwise she, you know, you don't need to go crazy. Just make sure she's got her TMR equipped so that she gets that initial 20 LB fill on turn one. Um, Sylvie doesn't really need anything. Honestly, she could, she could be naked and that would be perfectly fine. Um, you do want to, um, you do want to have her at least EX plus one so that get, she gets access to her brave shift so that she can use those, um, those earth amps. Um, and then if you, if you do only have her EX one, you want to make sure you give her some, some LB fill so that you make sure you have her limit burst up and ready on, um, on turn, uh, turn three. But even then, you could probably get away with not using her Brace Shifted LB. I think you could probably still, um, you could still do this clear even without her Brace Shift LB. So, so don't stress about that too much if your Sylvie's only EX plus one. I think you could still get away with it. Uh, Sukiko in her normal form, you can ignore all the gear in her normal form. Don't need it. Unnecessary. If you have Magic Boost Plus, which is Dark Rain's TMR, definitely put that in her normal form so that you can use that on turn three to give her uh, a little mag buff right before she does her burst on turn four. Um, other than that, you can the rest of her gear is irrelevant. Um, in her Bray Shift form, she is geared for full-on uh, evoke damage and LB damage. So you see I've got all of her evoke stats maxed and her LB damage is maxed. Um, now mine is EX3. So keep in mind, if yours is only EX2, then um, you'll want to change that Emperor's Ring to a Magister's Ring for the Chain Cat Boost. You'll also need to account for the missing LB damage. Um, she gets a, like 150% LB passive from her um, <laughs> when she hits EX3, so you'll need to make up for that. Uh, but it shouldn't be too much trouble. You can see I've geared her and, and still have an empty slot there. So um, you should still be able to max out all of that stuff if your Sukiko is only EX2. And an EX2 Sukiko should be just fine on this. Maybe even e EX1 will be fine. All right, uh, there's her own card. Um, so yeah, she should be good to go on this one. All right, she will do a fair bit of damage. She's going to do her, her, um, her LB. Um... But it's, it's really just that, you know, extra damage to get us over the cap. All right. Uh, so 2B is dealing the majority of the damage on this team. But you see I've tuned her, uh, tuned her down quite a fair bit from my previous clear. Um, mine is EX3, but you do not need to have an EX3 2B to get this done. An EX2 2B will be fine. Um, she does need to be at least EX2 to make sure that her LB is filled. Uh, she gets that turn one LB fill. Um, but yeah, that, that should be fine. An EX2 2B should get this clear done, especially if you bring somebody in that last slot to deal that little bit of extra damage. Um, but here you go. So she's got, uh, the Magister's Ring for the Chain Cat Boost, um, and then Ruler's Chainmail, uh, Crystal Gloves is there for, uh, the LB damage buff, or the, uh, LB damage passes. Just make sure she's capped on Undead Killers. Uh, Lion's Heart is to finish topping up her LB damage because I just gave her Chizuru's card. I didn't want to give her, like, a super strong vision card. Um, even though I've got her EX3, I didn't want to throw her vision card on there just in case yours is, uh, EX2 and you don't have access to that. Um, some other great options, however, would be, like, um, uh, Knight of Grand Shelt's vision card, if you have it, would be a great fit for her. Um, you could also put Lone Swordsman on there, which does the flat 500 attack. Uh, or even Hero Dies card, if you have it, which does 500 flat attack. Those are, those are better options uh, in this case. But again, I, I wanted to tune her down as low as I could uh, get away with and still hit the damage cap consistently. All right. Uh, in her Brave Shift form, um, I've just get, I've maxed out her LB fill. That's what the bunny clips are doing there. Same with the High Class Dagger and Call of the Wild. Uh, Call of the Wild is absolutely necessary to make sure that she has, has enough LB fill on turn two uh, so that we can get her LB refilled by turn uh, four. All right. Uh, Tyvus' spirit is there since we're going Earth Element instead of Light. We're going to use Tyvus' uh, spirit. If you, um, if you don't have Tyvus' spirit, then um, you might need that, that, last, uh, that last slot with a damage dealer just to make sure that you hit the damage cap. Um, but yeah, so it, that, that should be easy enough. If you don't have Tyvus' spirit, 
just throw in a Golbez in that last slot, and that will make up for the lack of damage there. All right. So uh, that should do it. Um, those are our, uh, our five units. Let's see how we get this done in four turns. All right. So Esther is going to start off, we'll do uh, her Omni cover, uh, followed by Energizing Bunny for the Reaper Killer, and then True Storm Brand. Now, even though this imbues her with lightning, don't worry, Esther's, her sorry, Sylvie is going to remove that imbue next turn when she does her, uh, her Earth imbue, okay? This is just to fill up Esther's LB uh, and make sure that we can have that full and ready to go for next turn. You see it's a little shy, but don't worry, Sylvie will fill that up next turn. All right, Elemental Vines and Elemental Petals to make sure that Esther is fully resistant to all the elemental damage. Burgeoning Defense for the non-elemental damage that she's going to take. All right, Tulian will do Jord Kicks, um, Full Breakdown, and then um, you could do Provoke. So actually, <laughs> you don't even need to make, her pa make him pass a Provoke, to be honest with you. You can just use his Active Provoke skill. Didn't even think about that. All right. Uh, Sukiko will just do Blessed Omomori, that's for the Rod and Peril, um, and then 2B is honestly just going to guard this turn. Okay, so there you go, resisting everything. Alright, um, Tulian can just guard on this turn. Esther's going to shift to normal, um, her LB needs a little bit of help, no problem. So we'll bring, uh, we'll shift Sylvie, we'll do Marion's Blessing Earth, and double Clever Paladin Strike. Okay, now before we do that, we're going to shift 2B and have her do her Limit Burst, her Brave Shift to Limit Burst. Now by waiting till turn 2 to shift, um, that's going to activate that Call of the Wild ability, so that she's going to fill 20 LB Chris at the end of this turn. Sylvie will then do another 20 LB this turn, and then when 2B uses Tyvus' Spirit next turn, Tyvus' Spirit does a 20 LB fill, so that's going to do the full 60 LB fill that 2B needs, which guarantees she will have her LB ready on turn 4. Alright, so do 2B first, before you do Sylvie. Okay. So now Sylvie can go and do 20 LB fill for 2B. Esther can do her limit burst to set up the uh, LB damage field. Now Sukiko can do the Earth Imperil field, purging Mandala Earth. Okay, and like I said, Tulian just guards. So now we have a 200% Earth Imperil. All right, very nice. The 89% defense break will kick in on turn four, and then Tulian's uh, limit burst, when we use that on turn four to chain with Sylvie, that will do the um, the spirit break for Sukiko. All right, Tulian will guard. Um, if you had magic boost plus, you would have Sukiko use that on this turn to buff up her mag, uh, but since I don't have it, I'm just gonna have her guard on this turn. All right, Esther, hmm, excuse me. Esther is going to do a double bolting slice and calm before the storm to set up for her burst next turn. All right, 2B will use Tyvus' spirit. So that fills up her limit burst. Sylvie will do her brave shifted limit burst for the buffs. If you don't, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have her brave shift limit burst up, then just use Paladin's offense. Uh, that does a 350% attack and mag break. Or sorry, 350% attack and mag buff. Not a break. That would be insane. All right, ready for the burst. All right, so Tulian does uh, his SLB. Like I said, if you don't have his SLB, that's fine. Just do his regular LB. It also chains triple bolting strike. Um, and he's going to chain with Sylvie. Triple clever paladin. Uh, Esther does her LB. 2B will shift back to normal and do her LB. Uh, Sukiko will shift into Brave Shift and do her LB. Now, you need to make sure that Tulian and Sylvie uh, go first so that the Spirit Break kicks in. That way Sukiko can take advantage of the Spirit Break. Um, you see we've got our 89% Defense Break, so that's great, but our Spirit Break is still stuck at 83%. So Tulian and Sylvie have to go first, 
followed shortly thereafter by Sukiko, and then you can do uh, 2B and Esther once the chain ramp has hit the cap. All right, so let's get this done. All right, just make sure that you tap Esther last so that um, 2B still takes advantage of that uh, earth and peril field. All right, 11.8, yep. So we did almost, well, we did over a billion, uh, you know, a billion more than the damage cap with that team. All right, so even even then, even after tuning that team down and taking a unit out, um, we're still, you know, there's still room to reduce the, you know, reduce the damage there. Um, or if your team, you know, isn't isn't doing as hot, use that fifth slot to make up the, the damage that you're missing. Um, so yeah, there again, 2B is doing the majority of the damage. She's, you know, literally doing 75% of the damage towards the cap and then uh Tsukiko and esther just kind of make up the difference there uh tulian and sylvie doing practically nothing like i said you know you could gear tulian and sylvie for some damage like if you gave sylvie some killers and bumped up her spirit a bit um and if you gave tulian some better gear with some killers they could potentially help you if you're like just barely missing the cap but again it's easier just to throw in uh, a unit in that empty slot, and that should get it done for you. So uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. This is probably the last Rank 1 video I'm going to do. Um, this, there's a lot of a lot of really cool and great videos out there showing lots of different ways to get this one done. Um, and yeah, so, so no real reason for me to do any other clears. It, it, unless there's a team you guys would like me to show you. Um, if I've got the units and, and there's a team composition you, you'd really like me to try, um, certainly leave a comment in the comments below and let me know what you'd like to see. If I have the units, I'll certainly give it a try. Um, but otherwise, yep, yeah, I'm pretty much done with this World of Visions and I'm just going to keep on farming to upgrade all the gear. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful or at least entertaining. And I will see you on the other side.